Here, I'm going to show you the three steps that you need to take in order to access a closed workbook using VBA and macros in Excel. It's a very simple little setup, and I'm going to show you how you can make it and then change it to do a little bit more interesting things. So at the end, I will show you an example where you can click a button and then have it go to your computer so you can select a file to work with. Then you can use the framework that I show you how to make the three simple steps to open that file and do whatever you need to do with it. And then if you want, close it again. So this framework is going to allow you to do some pretty interesting things. If you want to learn more about VBA and macros and how to automate all of your tasks in Excel and save yourself hours of time every single week, check out my full VBA course. It's online self-paced video tutorials, over 200 of them, over 200 downloadable Excel files and reference guides that you can use to jumpstart any project you have in VBA. And that course is going to take you from beginner and intermediate level all the way to expert and advanced level. It is a comprehensive course that's going to teach you how to automate your tasks to save a crazy amount of time every week. And you can access that by clicking the link below this video. Now for this project, let's get started. Hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA code window and create a new module, insert module, then double click that guy. And let's create a macro called work with files. And there are only really three steps. So step one, locate the file that you care about and get its full name, extension, and file path. Then step two is just open the file and do something with it. Whatever you wanna do with it, you have to open it in order to do something. To get data from it, to put data into it, you gotta open it, and it's very easy to do. And I'll show you a nice robust way to open it and get a reference to it. Once you're done, just close the workbook if that's what you wanna do. So these are the three steps and it's gonna be pretty easy to implement them. Let's start off with some variables, just a couple. Let's go file location as a string. This is the file that we are going to open. And then file to open as a workbook. It's going to make it so that we can very easily reference the workbook after we have opened it. And remember, you do have to open it in order to work with it. Now, one thing to make it a little bit faster and to reduce flicker so we don't see the screen flickering, Let's turn off screen updating equals false, and we can turn it back on at the end. There we go. That's not required, but it'll make things a little bit nicer. And now the very first thing is just file location control space to fill in the variable name. And this is where our file is located. So we put it within quotes because it's a string. And then just where is this on your computer? So. We are going to go to the test directory and now the full file name and path, test.xlsx. If it's a macro enabled file, it's going to be xlsm. And for the old file type, xls. But let's go with xlsx. What do we do now? Well, just open it. And we can open it like this, workbooks.open, and then give it the file name right here and that for us is stored in the file location variable, just like that. Now, if you leave it like this, you can still work on that workbook. You just have to use active workbook to reference it. However, it might not always be the active workbook. That's not a very good way to do things. So what we can do is to set a variable equal to the output of workbooks.open. And the output, if we click in here and hit Control I, we can see it's off the screen right now, but it says as a workbook. That means a variable just has to be a workbook type. File to open is that type. So we go set and then file to open, control space to fill that in, equals a workbooks.open. But since we put the result of this into a variable, we have to make sure that we put the arguments within parentheses like that. And now all we have to do is type file to open in order to reference that workbook. You want to access something in it? Well, give it a worksheet reference. Let's go for the very first worksheet and then a range reference. How about range A1? And what do you want to do? Let's change the value to high. And you can do whatever you want to do with it. Just make sure that you qualify the reference with file to open. 
And once you are done with that, let's go for file to open, close. And then space, do we want to save any changes that were made? Yes or no, true or false. True to save any changes and false to exclude any changes. So nothing is going to be saved that was changed since we opened it. And that's how I'm going to keep it. And this right here, uh, this chunk of code is your base for opening a file, doing something with it, and closing it. And now once we have this, we can build off of it. If I run this right now, you're going to see almost nothing happen. So I hit play. It does its magic. And there was no flicker there. What happened is it just went back to this screen right here since we were in the editor. So that's all that was. But we didn't really see anything happen, and that's OK. If you want to test it, we can go ahead right here, File to Open, or let's go right here, and click in the left little bar so it's a red dot. And what it means is it's going to stop the code execution when we get there. So click in here, or run it again. And here we have our test file. And then what we can do is go up here and hit F8, or debug, and step into, and it's going to run the very next line of code. And then we go back here and notice A1 now says hi. And if we finish running this, it will close the workbook and it will not save any changes, so the hi will not be saved. And that's our code. Now in order to make this a lot more useful, what we can do is to take this first step right here, which is get the file name, extension, and location, and make it so that it's not hard coded. You can get it from a cell, you can get it from an input box, or you can make it so that the user can select the file in a familiar dialog box like I showed you in the intro. So let me grab some code and paste it in here and show you how that can look. And here we go with all the comments that you're going to see in the downloadable file. Now I'm going to clear out the comments so it's a little bit easier to read and then show you what we've got. All right, so it looks like a lot, but it's mainly just variables and then breaking things up so it's a little bit easier to manage the code. So down here we have something that's going to be for the title for our window that's going to open. This allows us to filter the file types that we can view, so text files or Excel workbook. Then we have a file filter index. It's explained in the downloadable file. It just says which filter is going to be presented first. And then actually getting the files, which is just application.getOpenFileName. And if you want to make your life easier, you just replace that one line of code in the previous macro where I input the file name with this guy right here, application.getOpenFileName. Then we store the result in this variable, and we access it down here. So you can see that we still open it the same way, and then we can do whatever we want with it, and then we close it the same way. So all that changed was the stuff around it that allowed us to make it more user-friendly. But the core three steps remained the same. Get the file name, open and work with it, and then close it. Now in the downloadable file, this section is explained in more detail in the comments that are included there. Here I just want to show you how you can take the base structure that we have up here and make it into something that can be so much more useful and robust. But regardless, these three steps are still going to be the same. All the extra code that we added down below just made this a little bit different. And if you're interested in that file picker code, then definitely download this file so you have all the notes and all the comments and all the code there so you can copy and paste it into your project and play around with it. It'll be much easier to learn with that. And remember that you can learn so much more about how to use VBA and how to automate your project and save yourself hours of time every single week by checking out my full VBA course. I'll put a link to it below this video.